How fast is Starlink in Germany? Today we're gonna find out and we're also gonna talk about how we got it installed on our rooftop. In the last video, you could see me unboxing Starlink and setting it up for the first time in our garden, knowing that we would have some obstructions going on by the house, garage and nearby trees. So the speed test results were lower than what they would have been without those obstructions, but that was kind of expected. We had around 63 megabit download speed and 12 megabit upload. We also had some connection interruptions, but that was also due to the obstructions. Two weeks later, me and the roofing contractor finally got to install the Starlink dish on the rooftop. But before we could do that, we needed to install a dish pole that would hold the Starlink mount. That took a few hours and we had to rearrange some stuff on the roof, like the ladder and some steps. But finally, we got it installed pretty nicely on a dish pole using Starling's pole mount. The cable is running underneath the tiles towards our central inlet for cables. Thanks to our roofing contractor, Mr. Kerbel, this was done very clean and professionally. I can highly recommend getting professional help if you change anything like this on your rooftop. So this is the point where all the cables come in and our Starlink cable is rolled up here. Cable that comes from the dish goes into this power supply and then it is uh, forwarded into the Wi-Fi router which has an additional auxiliary port and this can be used to connect the Wi-Fi router to another network. And from here this connection goes down into the basement where we have all our network switches and network routing. If you're wondering how we got it connected to our internal network, here's the setup. The Starlink Wi-Fi box is connected to a dedicated network interface of our router. On the router, we run PFSense, which is an open source firewall system. Our existing DSL internet is connected to another port. The internal network switch is connected to the third port and our guest Wi-Fi is connected to port number four. PFSense is configured to use both internet connections in failover load balancing mode, so it will send packets out using both connections, but with a preference for Starlink. So it will only fall back to DSL if Starlink is offline or if it's high latency, meaning anything above 200 milliseconds will trigger a temporary failover until it gets better. Our current tests show that the top download speed measured directly at the Starlink router is between 154 and 140 megabit per second, and the top upload speed is between 26 and 16 megabit per second. The latency was between 26 and 89 milliseconds. We also had almost zero interruptions in connectivity, just a few seconds every day, which we basically don't even notice. The DSL connection is delivering around 45 megabits down and 10 megabits upload, so Starlink is already a huge improvement for us, especially for uploading videos and backups to the cloud. I also tested different everyday use cases. For streaming videos, downloads, internet browsing, Starlink seems to be perfectly suited and I didn't realize the difference in latency, but downloads were so much faster. With calls, so Skype calls, Microsoft Teams and Amazon Chime, I saw some issues with latency, but it got better in the last week. Though the lag was a bit more noticeable in video calls. Also, I think for real-time online games, this isn't yet fast enough from the latency perspective, because gamers always look for super low latency and speed actually doesn't matter so much for that kind of use case. Nice thing of having PFSense running on the router is that we can diverge back up and upload traffic to Starlink while still using the DSL connection for everything else that requires low latency. There's still a question, is Starlink worth it for the price? I think it very much depends on your current options. For us, there is nothing faster at the moment, so I would be willing to pay the higher price for faster DSL if I could get the same speed as with Starlink, which is not possible where we live. If you're living in a city where there might be fiber connections available for a much less price, it will definitely look different, but that's also not what Starlink is supposed to be for. It's meant to be for areas with bad or no internet connectivity, and that's where people will be willing to pay for fast internet. We're going to watch how this develops over time, and you can expect another update video when it gets colder, probably with snow and more bad weather, 
just to see if that has any negative influence. That's it for today's video. Hit the like button if you think this was valuable, share, subscribe, all the good things, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.